it's time right now in our lives that we stop and we ask God for the blueprint. And some of you feel like, well, I've gotten too far into this building process. And see, when you get too far into the building process, you feel like it's too late to turn around. But we said this morning that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. That if you were to scrap your blueprint right now and say, God, I want to do it your way. Give me your blueprint. You could start all over and like Nehemiah, be done in record time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nehemiah rebuilt that wall in record time. What should have took years. Not at all. Not under the power and inspiration of God. There's so many endeavors in life that we take on that we didn't ask God about. And we're working hard. We're building. And we're constructing. And we're making progress. And people are patting us on our backs and saying, man, y'all doing good, man. Man, y'all get it. And you think, well, I got to make God look good. I know none of y'all never thought that. But if I'm blessed, if I have this and I have that, then everybody's going to say, man, God is awesome. But what happens when it all collapses? Hmm. Does that same testimony apply? Is God still awesome? Yeah. He's still awesome, but where was the fault? It's right here. Yeah. That's right. right now, there are things that God has planned for you. And some of you can't even imagine. There's some people in this room that if they submit to God and follow His blueprint, that are going to travel the country. Wow. You're going to be flying across the country in jets even into other countries, because that's what God wants for you. But as long as you are controlling where I'm going, you miss out. You miss out because you think that if God directs this, I'm going to have to lose. I'm going to have to live a life of boredom. I'm going to have to be some old maid alone. But that's not true. In Proverbs chapter 24 uh, verses 3 and 4 and I love these verses. He said through wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established. Verse 4 says that by knowledge the rooms are filled with precious stones and pleasant riches. When you read that particular verse in the Amplified Version, it takes and expounds on those words. It says godly wisdom. It says God-given understanding. And it says that the knowledge of God fills the rooms of your house or your life or your family. And it fills those rooms with precious stones. And pleasant riches. Why am I saying that? Because you've got to understand that God is not opposed to you prospering. He's not opposed to you having a good life. Matter of fact, that's exactly what he wants. That's exactly because he does want to brag on you. He does want to say, this is, look at my child. Just like a proud parent. Well, my child's on her way to college and she's doing this and doing that and he's doing this. and he, God wants to brag on you. But he doesn't want you to make those things your goal. In Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, he breaks down life. He starts off with your attitude in verses 1 through 13. Then he talks about your example, 14 through 17. Then he talks about the kingdom in verses 20 through about 25. And then he begins to talk about the things in the heart. And then he begins to talk about uh, how we should treat our neighbor and how we should love people. And then in chapter 6, he begins to talk about praying and how we should look to please God and not to please man. And then he teaches them how to pray. And then he teaches them their focus. And he goes on to tell them, don't lay up your treasures here on the earth but in heaven. Then he tells them he can't serve two masters. And then by verse 24, he's telling them 
that you can't worry about life. What you're going to eat, drink, and where you're going to be clothed. Don't you know that your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things? Why are you seeking after them? By chapter 7, he's telling the people, don't judge one another. Don't try to take a speck out of somebody else's eye with a big old log in yours. He's teaching them about life. Then he goes into telling them, if you seek, you'll find. If you ask, you'll receive. If you knock, the door will be open unto you. And finally, he begins to teach them how to distinguish the false believers from the true believers. Knowing people by their fruit. And by verse 24, he's summing everything up. And he says, if you obey these sayings. What sayings? All of the things that he taught from chapter 5 all the way up to that point. He was teaching about how to build your life. 